Uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts uh, joins us today, one of the leading voices out there exposing this insane tyranny. Dr. Roberts, good to have you here with us. Thank you, Alex. I tell you, uh, so much is going on. I want to get into the Federal Reserve saying, yeah, we're going to inflate uh, the uh, the currency. We're going to devalue it to, quote, fix the debt in the Wall Street Journal. I want to get into this mortgage situation. Just the fraud gets worse and worse and everything happening on the planet. But uh, what is most important on Dr. Roberts' radar right now? Oh, gosh, Alex, uh, there's so many things I wouldn't know, know what to say. Um, uh, let me make a, a comment on Ron Paul's uh, interview you just uh, showed everyone. You know, I think the revolution uh, has already occurred. Uh, it's the neoconservative revolution, and they have replaced the U.S. Constitution with a police state. And we now have a government uh, that consists of neoconservative uh, warmongers, war criminals, and we live under a police state. So the revolution is is already uh, occurred. <laughs> it's a, it's over and done with, and most Americans uh, just slept right through it. That's right. It's, but the but the counter revolution is forming. I mean, explain that they quietly built this police state, this federalization, this debt to control people, and they've launched it. And they're robbing us and looting us and expanding wars. And they're arrogantly laughing. And they're so greedy. They're taking the death benefits of six million veterans, according to Bloomberg, just stealing their money in a secret deal with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Pentagon, uh, with the Veterans Affairs. They are. They are just doing things that are, are insanely arrogant. I mean, this is hubris that I don't think we've ever seen. Just the level of larceny. Uh, why do they think they're so invincible? I mean, let's, let's talk about how they had this coup. And if we can wake up to the coup, perhaps we can defeat it. Well, well they're obviously very confident that they can get away with it. You know, they, they're, not, they're not only stealing the death benefits of veterans, but they're stealing the uh, cost of living adjustments to uh, Social Security retirees. The COLA. Yeah, the co this is the second year in a row that there's no uh, cost of living adjustment for retirees. Now, anyone who uh, visits the, uh, the grocery store on a regular basis uh, knows that there's substantial inflation. And yet the government has declared that there isn't any. And uh, so uh, for the second year in a row, there's no, there's no Social Security adjustments. Um, uh, just the other day, uh, William Coyne, who, had, who was once uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, he published uh, an article in the Wall Street Journal that said that, uh, that repeated the uh, error that uh, Matthew Slaughter, a member of uh, Dubia's Council of Economic Advisors, uh, who had claimed that for every job that American multinationals offshore, they create two jobs in the United States. Now, this is absurd. There's no, there's no sign of these jobs. Hey, wait a minute, Dr. Roberts. We had a recovery a year and a half ago in June, and the moon is made of cheese, and the Easter Bunny's real, and Santa Claus is real. What are you, some kind of conspiracy theorist? Next time you're going to tell me the Flying Dutchman isn't real. <laughs> I don't know about the Flying Dutchman, but... Uh, what we when you see the Wall Street Journal and a former secretary of the of the Pentagon uh, repeating a claim that I myself showed uh, was false at the time it was made in my syndicated column and again in my most recent book, which is how the economy was lost, and they repeat this canard that. Uh, offshoring jobs is good for the American economy. It creates two domestic jobs for every job that they offshore. But there's no sign of these jobs, as I have reported monthly from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, non-farm payroll jobs data. There's no sign of these jobs. And how did they get this result? They got this result because they didn't make any adjustments to the data for the fact that a number of multinational corporations borrowed up other corporations that weren't multinational and acquired their domestic labor forces. And also a number 
of uh, American corporations, which had previously not had overseas operations, established overseas operations. And so what, where this so-called increase in multinational employment came from was merely from the change in the designation of firms, which had not been multinational and became multinational, either from their own uh, activities or by being purchased. Well, if you're so incompetent, you can't <laughs> adjust the data for in these necessary ways, and then you produce these lies and you keep them in front of the public over and over and over. I guess they assume they can get away with anything. No journalist other than myself has pointed out this fact. Uh, the Wall Street Journal repeated it on the 12th of this month. So, you know, what can't they get away with? Uh, weapons of mass destruction, Iranian nukes, 9-11, financial fraud. They get away with everything. There's no accountability, and that's why they have this hubris and this overbearing confidence that they can succeed. And they've trained uh, three million police to act in a goonish fashion and slap everybody around. And I mean, I, I was driving around in a neighborhood uh, three weeks ago, Dr. Roberts, and I was coming into work and I was cleanly dressed and, you know, driving a, you know, a clean car, conservative vehicle. And I'm driving in a neighborhood. I mean, I mean, on small little, you know, two lane neighborhood streets and there's. I don't know, six, seven, eight squad cars. They're, they're, they're parked on each side of the street where I barely could get through. I mean, and I'm driving, and there's like three inches on each side of the car, and I'm driving, and they're staring at me like, why are you looking at us and driving so slow? And and I'm I'm driving through, and then I turn down another little street and I park by somebody's house on a, on a little, almost one lane, you know, even smaller side street. And I, I park about 100 yards down and I, I walk up and I politely say to the uh, state police officers who have this weird checkpoint going on, hey, officers, how you doing? Uh, you know, good morning, trippers. What's going on? And they just marched right over to me. And this guy that looked like Yosemite Sam, and, and Dr. Robert's Skype cut out for a moment, so I'll just repeat yeah. the, uh, the story. So I'm driving around in a in a neighborhood. I mean, the, you know, with trees hanging over the road. I uh, got the, I got the story. Okay. So, so what you, happened when they walked over to you? Well, no, I walked up real, and I said, I'm going to test this, and I'm going to ask because if it's it's a checkpoint, it's illegal, and the state law said that, and they've had court cases over it. They got a tent set up and all this stuff, and they're blocking the road. It's a, it's a neighborhood road, and there's squad cars parked, and I can't even drive through barely. So I go, hey, trooper, hey, troopers, how you doing? And I, I put a charming you know, a demeanor on, and this guy who was probably not even five feet tall, and I'm, 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 I'm only 5'10", I'm not saying people are short or bad, but I don't have a Napoleonic complex. And he walks over, and it's a tape trooper in his cowboy hat, and he says, who are you? And I, I, I said, uh, well, I'm, I'm just wanting to know what this is. And he said, get in. And I'm not going to even, I'm, I'm too tired after 24 hours of broadcast to do it. Because he got, he bared his teeth and he screamed at me. In my face, he said, you get in your car and you get out of here. It's none of your business. And I, and I was very polite and I said, well, you know, is this a checkpoint? And he said, you're parked illegally. That's a real tyrant. And I wasn't parked illegal. It was a neighborhood. I was parked by, you know, somebody's house on, on a little side street. And there's yeah. trees over the road. I mean, it's a little, you know, little lane. And I said, well, number one, I'm not parked illegally. But I said, you go ahead and arrest me and show me I'm your slave. I said, this country's going to collapse. And they were all just, just crazed. And, and I even talked to police officers who were out of uniform. When they ask cops now for directions, they'll say, do I look like a stinking phone book to you move along but but i'm sorry I'm, I'm digressing with the time we have it's just you can see it like i've been in third world countries and you see corrupt cops slinking around and you know everybody's scared of them but they don't even act that bad in guatemala i mean this is disgusting well i, I have friends who uh, or acquaintances i guess i should say who um uh 
I hear talking about uh, their gun clubs. You know, they, some of them are competitive shooters, and they say that uh, for some time now, when they go to their gun clubs to practice, uh, there are more policemen there than, than there are club members. And that the police, uh, there'll be, you know, 20, 30, 40, as many as 50 um, officers and uh, they'll shoot up ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of ammunition <laughs> with automatic weapons, and it sounds like a war. And uh, and they're practicing what they call concentrated fire, where they have uh, uh, you know ten, twenty, thirty, forty officers unloading. Uh, uh, 15 to 30 round magazines and weapons as fast as they can on some target. And uh, what is it all about? I mean, so, and some of these uh, police uh, forces are from small mountain towns that <laughs> have, have no crime or anything else. So it's an amazing development. I think it all came from the uh, U.S. government militarizing the local police. And they're geared up looking for a war, and you don't have police acting okay. like military. They're, they're peace officers because a military kills people and breaks things and attacks an enemy, and they've been trained to be a military, and they're looking for war with the American people. And I've now got newscasts all over the country where they're announcing the armies here helping to take over the town in case of emergencies for a collapse. Guess what? This wasn't for Al-Qaeda. It was for you. And right. they can't wait. And, you know, it's not kill a commie for mommy. It's kill a conservative or a libertarian or a landowner for, for, for Goldman Sachs. I think that uh, the American people have uh, lost uh, control of their government at every level. Yes. <laughs> they, they, you know, the people were insouciant, uh, inattentive. Um, they were easily rolled up in the flag and scared with terrorism threats and they lost it. They lost the country. The country's lost. <laughs> but and, it's admitting and, that that gives us a chance to get it back. Well, I don't, I don't know. You know, I doubt there's any organization that's not infiltrated by the FBI or some other police agent. And, um, I would think the infiltration is so complete that it'd be impossible for anyone to organize any resistance. <laughs> that's uh, that's a fact. I mean, it's just a fact. It's, it, this looks like it's been in the works for some time. You know, if you think think about anything, take the Patriot Act. You know, it's a, it's an amazingly thick document, and yet it was ready within forty eight hours of. 9-11. <laughs> well, we know it's all the stuff that failed in the omnibus and the, and the, and the anti-terror acts under uh, the Clintonistas. Well, um, the thing had to already been written, which means that the government expected 9-11. I mean, how did they have this massive document already written? For what purpose? You know, it, it, you had to know, no, it's totally impossible to put a document like that together in 48 hours. Well, Dr. Roberts, and, and not let anybody read it before they voted on it, uh, I don't know if you've seen all this. There's a new story up at prisonplanet.com. In fact, put it up. You know uh, this international study group sued, and finally, after years, Force NIST released thousands of videos. And it's bombs going off in seven. It's firefighters saying they're going to blow it up, get back. It's firefighters coming out and saying there's bombs going off. And now it's CBS News. Turns out NIST grabbed a clip that nobody noticed and then classified it as the CIA does news clippings. <laughs> And it's the media announcing that the World Trade Centers were blown up with bombs on CBS News. I mean, they they blew Kennedy's head off right in front of us. They blew those towers up right in front of us. And uh, and, and 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 you're right. This this infiltration, this globalist, this whole thing goes way back.